Wait, not yet. I'm ravenous. I want her hot. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Horror Rises from the Tomb stars Dark Corner's favourite, Paul Nashi. With the blood of my enemies running through your veins, you will serve and help me accomplish my vengeance. Spain's king of horror. But here, he's not playing a werewolf or a vampire. You are vampires in Lincoln throats! Or maybe he's both. Either way, Alaric de Marniac is a bad guy, cursing his executioners even as he goes. Put a curse on you, Armand de Marnac, my despicable brother. Although the execution is stolen by his mistress, Mabille, who shows extraordinary dedication to finishing her curse in difficult circumstances. You yourself, your own incarnation, will bring us back from the grave. We shall return soon to take vengeance upon you. May you be cursed. May a curse be upon you all. Jumping ahead to the present, we meet Alaric's descendant Hugo, also played by Nashi, and his artist friend Maurice, descended from one of Alaric's executioners. Yes, I'm obsessed with a strange face, and I can't seem to get it right. They're invited, with their girlfriends, Sylvia and Paula, to a seance. There won't be any trouble, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure there will be. Hugo has an idea. Perhaps I'll ask for Alaric de Marnac. Let's disturb the restless ghost of my evil ancestor. According to the legend, they buried his head somewhere, near the ancient ruins of the old monastery, on my lands. Perhaps if I ask him where, he'll tell us where to find it. Then we can dig up his head. Paul Nashi films often rely on people tempting fate in a way that suggests they've never seen a Paul Nashi film. Maurice bails, but the others go to the seance of the screaming medium. And things get weird. Alaric de Marnac, is that you? Yes, it is I. As this is happening, Maurice is suddenly inspired. <laughs> and... That's the image I've been trying to get out of my mind, the severed head of my best friend. Determined to tempt fate further, the four head up to the ancestral de Marnac home, where Hugo stores his spare women, just in case more victims are needed. Legends of buried treasure enable Hugo to enlist some local villagers in the search for his ancestor's head by digging in random spots, despite the misgivings of his caretaker, Gaston. The demon, he walks about. Maurice's connection to Alaric leads them to a chest. Here, help me. My sustenance will be the human heart. Well, that doesn't sound good. Let's try and open it. Seriously, tempting fate. They put the chest aside until morning, but as they sleep... Now we have it. The villagers can't wait, and... Possessed by Alaric, the villagers kill Gaston. Ah! Hugo and Maurice give him a dignified send-off. It's what he would have wanted. But someone's committed two murders here, and we've been forced to get rid of the corpses. Forced? We'll find a solution. Damn it. Why did we ever get mixed up in this? Bit of harmless grave robbing and it's all gone wrong. More deaths follow. <laughs> as hearts are needed to feed Alaric's hungry head. While Paula wanders off in her most diaphanous nightwear. <laughs> it's all your fault. You dragged us into this. <laughs> kind of true. Something I like about this film, and I do kind of like this film, is that for once, Nashi is not playing the miserable, tragic monster which, as subscribers will know, is my main problem with his films. Hugo is kind of an arse. 
Why don't we play a trick on the girls? What do you mean? Can you imagine if we walked into their rooms in white sheets? Huh? Alaric is thoroughly enjoying his undeath. <laughs> And once he gets his head back, he terrorizes the countryside. Still under Alaric's spell, Maurice now kidnaps Sylvia. <laughs> while her boyfriend Hugo is hitting on Gaston's daughter, Elvira. I've only loved one woman. Alaric uses Sylvia to resurrect Mabille. This film has a sort of one-in-one-out policy on semi-naked women. <laughs> Unable to leave, and with Alaric's forces massing, Elvira remembers something. My father was guarding a, a thing he said would defend us that if any time someone came out of the tomb to destroy us. When someone's taking precautions like that, maybe don't go digging up heads. Anyway, they retrieve the thing. Thor's hammers. This film has a throw everything at the wall and see what sticks approach that is working for me. Maurice returns, unaware that he is Alaric's puppet. Maurice, don't do it. <laughs> No way he just killed Paul Nashie. <laughs> Maybe now. Maurice does display some of the tendencies I dislike in other Nashie films. I don't know how many monstrosities I've committed under his evil orders. All this killing people has been so hard on me. He's lured out by the newly undead Paula. <laughs> forgetting that he is carrying the Thor's hammer's talisman. Paula! Oh my God, what have they done to you? That's you, you idiot! Get that thing off of me! <sighs> At the end, only Elvira and Alaric are left alive. Alaric already weakened by Maurice throwing the talisman at him. <laughs> Elvira strikes the final blow. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> between vampirism, Thor's hammers, strange rituals, violent deaths, zombies, and a procession of women in nightgowns, this is a film with more full blooded joie de mort than the typical Nashi movie. It's mad, nonsensical, and the protagonist's behaviour is the equivalent of flipping off fate and then saying, what are you going to do about it? Is it that you think we're going to find that silly head? Brilliantly, the house where it shot was actually Nashi's. This is exactly how I imagined his home life. Definitely my favourite Nashi we've reviewed so far, and there are many more. I shall be back. I'll be back. I might plug my vampire book, what the fuck. There's enough blood drinking in this. Thanks for watching. For another vampire story you might enjoy, check out my book, The Immortal Dracula. There's a link in the description below. Paul Nashie's Alaric de Marniac is having the time of his death. Who are cinema's happiest villains, the ones enjoying their evil? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs>